the whole weekend and, and spend it with us. Uh, he, he's pastoring a very successful ministry in the city of Houston, Texas, and God is using him across the country and around the world. And uh, I'm just happy. He's one, you don't really need an introduction. He, we know him well here. He, I consider him one of my sons and one of the sons of this house. He's a preacher's preacher. Uh, he sings, he preaches, he plays the organ, you name it, he can do it. He's a triple threat. Triple. And uh, so we, we had a serious trouble this morning. Will you put your hands together? Give a warm welcome to our son, brother, the Honorable Bishop Titus Stewart. Make some noise up in here, y'all. Reach out and take someone by the hand this morning and leave no one untouched today. The person hand that you're holding just squeeze their hand real gently. And tell them, say, you won't leave it like you came. In Jesus' name. Bound, broken. Heart lame. For the power of the Lord. You're still the same. Now look at him and tell him. You won't leave it. Like you came in Jesus' name. Now take loose that hand and grab somebody else's hand because somebody needs to leave here today with a miracle from God. And come on, tell them, say, you won't leave it like you came in Jesus' name. Tell them, pow, broken. Our lane. Tell the Father, power of the Lord is still the same. Tell him, I don't know what you came here with. I don't know what's bothering you. I don't know what's disturbing you. But tell him, you won't leave here. Tell him, you, you won't leave here. Come on, squeeze that hand and tell him, you have won't leave here like you came in Jesus hallelujah oh bless the Lord Now you minister to your neighbor, but lift your hands and look towards heaven and say, I won't leave him like I came. Say it again. I, I, I won't leave him like I came. Come on, let every demon in hell that's been frustrating you all week, let him hear you say, I won't leave him like I came. In G. Oh, yes, such name. Well, put your hands together and praise God for your miracle. I didn't say praise God for you, but praise God for your miracle. I want you to praise God like your miracle just, just dropped in your lap. Come on, how was your praising? Your miracle just dropped in your lap. Before you take your seat, just look at somebody and tell them the rest of my days will be the best of my days. Yes. Yeah. 
Now let me put that in proper context. I'm not talking about next year. I'm declaring before this year ends that the rest of your days will be the best of your days. I feel prophetic for a moment. Just tell about three people some good's about to happen to you. Get your Bible in your hand and let's go straight to the word of the Lord. You have been blessed all month long with good preaching and teaching. And I'm sure that you are ready to do kingdom work. And I'm so glad to be here at the vessel this morning. This is a great church. This is a great church. Great church. And by far, you're a great church because not only do you serve a great God, but God has blessed you with a great pastor. And a great pastor. He's blessed you with an amazing, eloquent, uh, gorgeous, youthful first lady. First lady, Arlene Young. And I'm in good company today. Bishop, I wouldn't have had any problems any time that uh, Dr. Terry High is on the scene, amen, I, I can always bring my, my notepad and pen because I know I'm going to get something. And uh, Co-Pastor Judy Sanders, it's always good to see you and to all of the people of God that have gathered here this morning. I look across the building, Bishop, and some of my members are here uh, in service this morning. <clears throat> And um, so glad to have them as well. Uh, the book of Philippians, a very familiar passage of scripture. That sounds good. Philippians chapter 1, and uh, I just want to extract one verse for the sake of time uh, this morning. That would be Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. If you have arrived there, would you respond by saying, I have the word. <laughs> And it reads, and I'm going to ask that you would read with me in concert this morning. Shall we read it together aloud? Come on. Amen. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask now that you give unto us the unction to function. Anoint our minds afresh. We don't stand today to entertain, but we stand as your ambassador that has been sent to this region for such a time as this. Somebody needs a rhema word, a word that would transcend, transform, inform, to cause them to conform. Now, Father, have your way. Speak to us, and God will obey. And I pray we leave this place different than the way we've entered. We give you all the praise and the glory it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. <clears throat> Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject entitled, Your Destiny is greater than your disaster. Your destiny is greater than your disaster. Uh, you don't need your neighbor on this one this morning. <clears throat> Just tell yourself, say my destiny. <laughs> say a little bit better than that. Say my destiny, my destiny. is greater, greater than my disasters believe that this one your destiny is greater 
The Jewish Bible says it this way. I am sure of this, that the one who begun a good work among you will keep it going until it is completed on the day of redemption. <clears throat> Paul affirms here that that work was begun by God. It was not by their own agency or neither was it done by their own will. It was on the fact that it was begun by God that he based his firm conviction that what has been begun by God would be and remain permanent. Had it been the agency of man, he would have had no such conviction for nothing that man does today can lay the foundation of a certain conviction that he would do the same thing tomorrow. In other words, it's not always good to put all of your confidence in man. Because <clears throat> man can be on the same channel with you today and they can shift tomorrow. But he's saying here that it, if the perseverance of the Christian depended wholly on himself, therefore there could be no sure evidence that he would ever reach heaven. Notice what the text says. He which hath begun, and he calls the work good, a good work. Very interesting word that is planted here in this text. He which hath begun a good work. Do not drive by that word good. Do not, do not speed by it. Take a few moments and look at what Paul's intent in his expression of this word good. The word good is the Greek word agatos. It simply means that God even uses the bad and evil because God permits it. In other words, with this word good here, agatos means that even God categorizes and classifies the bad as good. Because most of us only can get happy when we hear good reports. But here Paul is saying that you ought to get happy even when it's a bad report. Because what has begun by God is permanent. And even the bad that comes cannot remove what's permanent. And so you have to understand that sometimes God allows the contrary elements of things to get into the dynamics just to see if our stability and our convictions will remain the same. Because anyone can praise God consistently with a good report. But what makes the praise legitimate is when you can still praise him after hearing a bad report. <clears throat> because that's where the enemy has put a bed out in hell that she can praise him when she's up. But when she's down, then she goes into amnesia land. land. But there's somebody here this morning that came with an attitude that even though things are not going according to my liking and even though things are contrary to my hopes and my dreams and my aspirations I still came in this house with a yet praise mentality it takes something to come in here and say yet though you slay me yet will I trust you so Paul here says, he which hath begun a good work in you. Uh, Paul says, let me tell you when you ought to praise him. Because when bad things, contrary things show up in the equation, sometimes uh, the bad things tend to get jealous because of the good things. And sometimes the bad things, they're there to agitate, they're there to distract you. They're there to rob your focus. 
But there are times you have to have a mentality that says, even though there's something that's facing me that's beyond my request, there's still a stability in my spirit that is not moved by what I see. I always am moved by what I know. And see, once you get that to that place that you're not moved by what you see, you begin to make the enemy scratch his head and begin to ask, what can I do? To alter her conviction because every time I throw something at her, she gets stronger. <laughs> Every time I throw something at him, he gets better. As a matter of fact, for somebody, your hallelujah went into another volume. Because you just want to send hell a message. That after everything that I've been through, I am still a survivor. I don't know how many people in here today that feel like aggravating the devil. Let the devil know that I'm still a survivor. Just clap your hands and shout, I'm a survivor. Don't panicate, clap him and come on. See, let, let me tell you something about your clap. See, there, David said, Lord, teach my hands how to war. You got to understand that your clap is a sound that is an irritation in the ear of the enemy. And every time you clap, you make his ear hurt. <laughs> Come on. Yes. My God. As I rush through here this morning, notice what Paul says. Be in confidence that he which hath begun a good work, he says, will perform. Uh, will perform means that he would carry it forward to completion. And that he would perfect it. It is an intensive form of the word, meaning that it would be carried out through to the end. If you would notice, he says, he which hath begun to work, good work in you, shall perform it until. That word until means as far as, utmost, as long as. In other words, God is saying, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not just with you at this phase of your life. When things shift, I'm with you. When things are well, I'm with you. When things are not well, I'm with you. When things are right, I'm with you. When things are wrong, I'm with you. When they are with you, I'm with you. When they leave you, I'll stay with you. And yes, when you have it, I'm with you. See, I love a God like that. You know, some folks can hang with you when you got it. But when you run out of it, they dissipate. But God says, when you have it, I'm with you. When you run out of it, I'm with you. So when he says here, with he which hath begun a good work in you, I will perform it until, meaning I'm in it for the long haul. I'm, I'm going to stay faithful. When it gets ugly, I'm going to be faithful. When, when it starts smelling bad, I'm going to stay faithful. Uh, when they lay you off, I'm going to prove to them, y'all laid her off. But I'm the God that can keep supplying all of her needs according to his riches and glory because I'm going to stick with you until and so he says regardless of what you may now see or how you may now feel the truth of the matter is Bishop Young that your greatest days are just ahead and I start by the day to tell somebody you are not a finished product your miracle is in the making and you have not reached your potential and the work that God began in you he will finish it what God started in you I got some good news today to tell you that he will complete it you may be in the midst of the greatest battle of your Christian life and hell have made an all out attack against you and maybe you're in the middle of a trial and affliction or a setback that you cannot see any way out of it but I have some good news for somebody today and that is your destiny is greater than your disaster God will bring to pass what he has promised you and hell doesn't have enough devils and you don't have enough enemies to keep God's promise and plan for your life from being fulfilled I want 
you to understand this morning that God didn't bring you this far to forsake you. He has too much invested in you to give up on you and hell is not in charge of your life. Because you don't belong to the devil, you belong to God. Satan doesn't control your destiny and hell doesn't have the power to stop you or to keep you down. And I want you to understand that just as the devil couldn't keep Jesus in the grave, neither can he keep you in the trial. Neither can he keep you in the setback or the affliction that you may be in right now. I heard him say in the book of Acts chapter number 2 verse 23 and 24 is it him being delivered from the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God uh, he ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God had raised up having loose the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it Peter says it was impossible for death to hold him Jesus did not have enough enemies the Roman soldiers they just did not have enough power even Satan himself could not stop the resurrection Jesus was destined to go in the grave but he was also destined to come out of the grave <laughs> Acts chapter 2 and verse 27 says because thou will not leave my soul in hell neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption you see my brothers and sisters Jesus knew that he would be crucified but he also knew that after the crucifixion there would be a guaranteed resurrection uh, he knew that the cross was not the end, but the cross was actually the beginning. And this is why he could say in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it set down at the right hand uh, of the throne of God. And I want you to hear me today. I don't know who this message is for this morning, but a setback doesn't mean that is over a setback is positioning you for a comeback a door shut means that another door is about to open an ending only means that there is getting ready to be a new beginning the road to destiny consists of endings and beginnings the road to destiny consists of endings and beginnings setbacks and comebacks you are experiencing a great setback at the present time then get ready to experience a great comeback I heard him say in Job 42 and 10 said and the Lord turned the captivity of Job the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before you got to see this if you will and that is Job experienced great loss but in the end the Lord blessed him with twice as much as he had before his ladder was greater than his beginning Job 42 and 12 and 13 says so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning for he had 14,000 sheep 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses she he also had seven sons and three daughters and the reason why it happened this way is because his destiny was greater than his disaster ah, you gotta hear me if you will and that that is God will bring you out of your trial he will bring you out of the affliction he will bring you out of the setback that you are experiencing right now God brought Joseph out of the pit he brought Israel out of Egypt he brought Daniel out of the lion's den he brought the three Hebrew children out of the fire and I got some good news 
news for somebody under the sound of my voice and that he's getting ready to bring you out of whatever you are in right now I heard him say in Psalms 34 and 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous but God delivers not out of a few but out of them all and then he crescendos in his writing and takes us to Psalm 30 and 5 and said weeping may endure for the night uh, but joy it will show up and when it shows up it means it's morning time uh, no storm is made to last forever neither should your trial nor your affliction or setback you shouldn't be fighting the same battle today that you were fighting last year I heard him say in Romans the 8th chapter verse 37 he says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us and then he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 he says now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ now the question is how many things do we conquer the answer has to be all things uh, the questions continue to roll out and that is how often do we triumph and the answer has to be always uh, and I know it's hard to understand and I know in the natural you cannot figure it out but the truth is God would take what looks like a curse uh, and turn it into a blessing he would take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it into your good regardless of what you may be going through and regardless of what you are facing you have the promise in Romans 8 and 28 and we know that all things they work together for the good of them to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose so if you could understand the purpose and the problem wouldn't drive you so crazy if you a man will stay true in hard times uh, God will use your adversity to make advancements God is about to take your disappointments and he will cause them to become your appointments he will take your oppositions and use them to open up amazing doors there's not a pit deep enough there's not a fire hot enough there's not a storm powerful enough there's not a chain strong enough nothing can hold you back you were created to be a victor you were made to win and Adam you were born a loser but in God you were born a winner God is not a loser and so since God is not a loser you are not a loser neither you are not an accident you are not a mistake before time began you were part of God's plan you were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world as a matter of fact when you stood up this morning when you got out of the bed and landed on your two feet the devil says oh shucks because the devil says every time the child of God rises up it means that I got to get ready for battle and if the devil didn't want to hear you praise God he should have never let you get in this house this morning because I promise you I'm going to bless the Lord and give him a shout of victory I need about 30 people right now that will let the devil know you should have never let me get in here this morning you should have killed me when you had your hand around my throat trying to choke the life out of me but I need about 30 people that will scream, I am still alive. Uh, uh, I'm still alive. Uh, you got to see this if you will. He tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 4. He says, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love when you were born again you were born 
framed in his image, created in his likeness, and you were born with his spirit. Uh, you are the child of the most high God, and you are joint heirs with Christ. Uh, I heard him say in Romans the 8th chapter, the 16th verse, and verse 17, he said, the spirit itself bared witness with our spirit, uh, that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, uh, heirs of God, and joint heirs uh, with Christ, and if we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together. I've got some good news to tell somebody that you are the son of the most high God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but as many as received him to them, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on the name of the Lord. You are part of the family of God. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. When Satan sees you, he sees a child of God. He sees what you are about to become and what you are about to do. And when Satan sees you, he sees destiny. That's why he has had so much. That's why he has had so much attack against you. Because he knows that you have been chosen for such a time as this. And he wants to keep you from becoming what God has predestined for you to become he wants to keep you from your future you must understand this my brothers and sisters that hell is not fighting you because of who you are right now of where you are of what you're about to have hell is fighting you because of who you are about to become and where you are about to go and what you're about to have somebody to tell somebody that hell is afraid of your future ah yes he's afraid of your future you're not going through what you're going through because of sin you're going through what you're going through because it's something called destiny people that are not going through anything are people that are not going anywhere ah, but if you're going through something right now that me in order to go to you got to go through and you're in a good place to praise God because the enemy wants you to sit here and make you feel like you've done something wrong it ain't that you've done something wrong it's just about where you're going and God says every person that's here today that's been folding your arms and crossing your legs and got a lock on your mouth he says the devil ain't interested in you but every person in here that would open your mouth and praise God God says if you praise me fast I'll get you there fast a favor and I got to get out of here. Shake your neighbor and say, I got a fast forward praise. Because God says every person that'll praise me right now, I'm going to put your destiny on fast forward. Uh, you can sit there and be sedated and stuck up if you want to. But I need somebody who need God to do something fast. And God says if you praise me fast, I'll do it fast. I got five minutes. Uh, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Um, and so here, uh, he says here, uh, that is not, uh, you got to understand, I feel like preaching here. Shake your neighbor and say, it's all about your destiny. Uh, that's why he's aggravating you. That's why he's frustrating you. Uh, that's why the devil won't leave you alone. That's why he can't rest. Uh, that's why every time you open your mouth, you make him nervous. Because uh, it's all about destiny. It ain't about your clothes, baby. You ain't that sharp. It ain't about your looks. You ain't the prettiest one in here. It's all about your destiny. And people that's going somewhere make the devil nervous. He can't sit still. He can't keep it together. Ah, God, as a matter of fact, there's about 30 of y'all right now. Your praise just changed the agenda. Ah, God. God was going to bless you in December. But God decided to reach in December. <laughs> 
and drag your blessing in September. Uh, uh, God have mercy. Uh, uh, come to tell somebody, God's going to turn your September to Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas in September. Uh, if you can praise him right now, God says... I want you to see this here that if David hadn't been destined to be king he wouldn't have had to run from Saul for 13 years if Joseph hadn't had the promise of the palace he wouldn't have never had to go into the pit and then into prison if Israel had not been on her way to a wealthy place she would not have had to go through the fire and through the flood I heard him say in Psalm 66 and 12 that thou has cast men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place but Israel entered into the wealthy place a place of abundance and overflow she first went through the fire and then she went through the flood but just as the fire and the waters could not stop Israel the trial and the affliction or the setback that you are experiencing cannot stop you God brought Israel he brought Israel out of Egypt he brought Joseph out of the pit and Daniel out of the lion's den the three he voice out of the fire and he would do the same for you because your destiny is greater than your disaster <laughs> everything God has promised you shall shall come to pass. Uh, Numbers 23 and 19 says God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent had he said it and shall he not do it had he spoken it and shall he not make good on it. Uh, he is more than able to fulfill, uh, to fulfill his promises. Uh, God's word will not return to him void. Uh, God will perform his word. Uh, I heard him saying I Isaiah 55 and 11 so shall my word be that good for out of my mouth it shall not be turned unto me void it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent him and then Jeremiah 1 and 12 says for I will hasten my word to perform it I come today to tell somebody that your future is better than your past Satan knows if he can keep you in your past you will never move into your future that's why Satan is spending so much time talking about your yesterday uh, did you ever notice uh, that's all that Satan can talk about is yesterday he never talks about tomorrow God is the one that discusses your tomorrow not the devil don't build your future around your past focus on your tomorrow and not your yesterday you gotta learn how to talk about your future and not your past don't dwell on where you were yesterday dwell on where you are today and where you about to go it's your future your destiny that Satan wants to keep you from entering into everything you're going through the battles the afflictions the tests the setbacks the strange trials the abnormal hindrances that you are experiencing everything you're going through is the enemy trying to keep you from your destiny Satan wants you to lose focus he wants you to become discouraged and give up to, uh, to every reaching uh, your and uh, forgive you from reaching your potential uh, but don't get your eyes off of the prize uh, quit looking at what you're going through and begin looking at what you're going to uh, don't think on what you are experiencing uh, start shouting on what you expecting uh, 
because your destiny come on Devin we got to go and go now your destiny is greater than your disaster you gotta understand this this morning that Satan's greatest fear is your tomorrow his greatest fear is your tomorrow Satan does not want you to become who God said you would become he doesn't want you to go where God said you would go and have what God says you would have the attack is on your future that's why he's trying to discourage you because your attack is on your future why did Pharaoh try to kill Moses as a little baby he wasn't working any miracles he wasn't delivering the people of God he was just a Hebrew boy a little Hebrew boy that looked no different than any other Hebrew children Pharaoh didn't try to kill Moses as a little baby because of who he was at the time he wasn't afraid of who he was but he was afraid of who he was about to become and that was Israel's deliverer Joseph's brothers didn't try to kill him because of who he was at the time he was only 17 years old he was a 17 year old young man and all he had was a dream but Joseph's brothers wasn't afraid of who he was they were afraid of who he was about to become it's fine sir they were afraid that his dreams might come to pass Saul wasn't afraid of David as a young boy playing the harp in fact Saul loved it when David played the harp because the evil spirit of Saul would leave Saul wasn't afraid of who David was at the time he was afraid of who David was about to become who was Israel's next king before Jesus was even two years Years old, Satan moved on the heart of Herod to have all the male children two years and under killed. Why was Satan trying to kill Jesus as a baby? He had never opened the eyes of the blind, he had never healed a leopard, he had never cast out a devil, he had never turned water into wine, he had never multiplied any loaves of fishes neither had he shed any blood as the prophet said he should he looked like any other babies he cried and acted like a normal baby Satan wasn't afraid of Jesus ah he wasn't a friend of Jesus as a baby he was afraid of who Jesus would become and when he became a man Satan wasn't afraid of what he was doing at the time he was afraid of what he would do in the future and let's loose those who were bound Satan says if I let Jesus loose that crack addict will never will remain a crack addict he says if I let Jesus loose that prostitute will remain a prostitute he says if I let Jesus loose that woman with children and her husband left her would never know what it feels like to have a companion that can walk with her he says I've got to hold Jesus but Jesus was so locked into his future that while on the cross he looked at the grave and says I'm gonna let you hold me for just three days but I got to get up cuz if I don't get up that prostitute won't get delivered if I don't get up that homosexual won't get delivered you got to understand Satan is not fighting you because of who you are he's fighting you on who you're about to become he's afraid of your future that's why he can't rest that's why he can't calm down 
because every time he sees you you remind him of your savior you remind him that God made a promise over your life you remind him that that's the one that told the Lord if you bring me out I'll bless you if you bring me over I'll give you the glory and that's why the devil he hates that you came to church this morning because you told the Lord if you let me get in the house I'll praise you I'll bless you I need somebody here today to praise God because he brought you out your past praise him because he got you to your present but Praise him because you got a future. I wish you help me pray for a moment. Shake your neighbor's hand and see me. Now I understand why the devil keep messing with me. It's my future that bothers him. It's my destiny that messes with him. That's why when you sit on your seat and keep your mouth shut, you do the devil a favor. But when you open your mouth and go to praise God, it makes him nervous because he understands you got the vision. God told me to tell you. He said, praise on what you see. And every time you praise I'm pushing you closer to your blessing every time you open your mouth I'm pushing you closer because your destiny is greater than your disaster can I preach for a moment cram your neighbor and say neighbor excuse me tell them I just had a flashback I'm welcome brought me from and tell him I got to praise him I got to bless him all the hell that I've been through I got to praise him should have lost my mind and you don't want me to praise him should have been crazy and you don't want me to praise him should be in a mental institution and you don't want me to praise him if you don't like hollering put your finger in your Cause I promise I'm gonna holler I'm gonna scream I'm gonna shout Because I Got a destiny I need a destiny praise That I pick up your feet Open up your mouth And shout my destiny Is greater Y'all not said it I'm Open up your mouth and shut my destiny is greater than my disaster. I've been to hell, but I still got joy. I lost, I lost some stuff, but I still got peace. They talked about me. They said I wasn't going to make it, but I'm still here because my destiny was greater than my disaster I should have been dead but my destiny is greater than my disaster and you don't want me to praise him get out of my way cause when I think of the goodness of Jesus he sung for me my soul cried out do me a favor crown your neighbor need a praise partner. I need somebody to help me shout, help me praise, help me dance, cause you don't know my story, you don't know what I've been through, you don't know the things I had to suffer, but I Open up your mouth and give him a destiny praise. I said, give him a destiny praise. Ha! <laughs> 